Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on this Palm Sunday. Welcome to online worship with the American International Church. On this day that leads us into Holy Week, I wish you the hope of God's salvation to come, the hope that Easter Sunday is coming, and I wish you the joy of knowing that you are not alone here in worship in God's presence and as you see the palms of some familiar faces waving at you in just a few moments in the service. As you prepare your heart and your spirit for worship, hear this call. We raise our voices and wave with joyful hope the palms of deliverance of God's people. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Our hearts are filled with expectation as we welcome the coming King. We receive into the crowded streets of our lives the one who is Savior, not only of us, but of all the earth. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Amen. In that Hosanna spirit, then, would you join with me in calling upon the Spirit of God to move among us and within us this day? Let's pray. Loving God, As we journey with your Son in this week of remembrance and hope, help us to understand you and your love for the world more clearly. Transform us by the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and prepare us for service in your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as you take in this glorious parade of palms, may you in that moment Feel the love and joy and peace of God that passes all understanding. And would you share that with others as well, whether it's someone in the room next to you or someone far away via text or email. Peace to you this day. One, two, three, Hosanna! (laughs) Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. From sunny Texas, I'm wishing everyone a, a blessed Easter. Hi. Hi, Jared. Hi, congregation. I miss you all at the American International Church. Bye bye. reading today comes from the book of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in a word of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the most common questions of the last year has been this. What day is it today? Is it Sunday again, really? Wait, you mean it's March? What happened to February? Where, where did all the 20s go? Here we are at the 28th already? Sometimes, though, it feels about like the 13th Tuesday of Jan Martober. It's not helped by moving the clocks forward last night, of course. Yeah, that was last night. Double check what time it is if you forgot. YouTube for the win. You can watch this whenever you want. Well, you figured out by now, at least, that in church, the day is Palm Sunday. You know the story already. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, riding on a small donkey into the city gates. And the crowds cry out, Hosanna, save us, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And every year we are reminded that by week's end, this same crowd shout, crucify him, crucify him. Palm Sunday launches this whole emotional roller coaster that is Holy Week. All the heights and depths of Jesus' final days. Palm Sunday, shouts of praise and joyous hosannas. Monday, anger, protest, turning over the tables in the temple. Tuesday, teaching. Controversy that draws the wrath of religious authorities. Wednesday, a lovely night out in the village of Bethany. Dinner hosted by a man he'd healed, the woman with the alabaster jar, the generous one we talked about last week, anointing Jesus in love. Thursday, another dinner with friends, bittersweet, because it's the last one. With final instructions to love one another and remember him with bread and wine. And then, betrayal. Agony in the garden. As Friday dawns, Jesus is arrested, mocked, tried, whipped, and murdered on the cross. Saturday, we hit grief. The tomb, cold and dead. And then, at dawn on Easter Sunday, everything breaks open in joy again at the resurrection. Really? It's enough to give you whiplash. What, what day is it again? Since I was very young, a preteen, I have loved praying my way through the days of Holy Week, imagining myself walking with Jesus through this emotional drama as a disciple in Jerusalem. I've often said, only joking a little bit, that I think I got into ministry just so that I could immerse myself in Holy Week without anybody thinking it was strange. I think I got this focus on Holy Week from a preacher who talked about how you could only truly experience the joy of Easter if you went all the way with Christ to the cross. I'm sure that many of you have heard a similar sermon somewhere along the way too. So my love for Holy Week 
from the delight of Palm Sunday to the depths of Good Friday is always reaching out toward Easter. That's really the difference between us and all the original disciples and the women and maybe even Jesus himself. We know something they don't, how it ends. Easter is coming. We even know when it ends. We know what day it is. It's just one week. All those swings from one extreme to another, it's all back to good news between Palm Sunday and Easter. It all gets accomplished. This year, I just can't get into Holy Week like before. When I was trying to write this Palm Sunday sermon, I couldn't find my Hosanna anywhere. I started the day in kind of a Holy Tuesday mood, angry and ready to turn over some tables. A conversation with a friend gave me some of that Wednesday blessing and presence But by evening, I hit a wall of grief and it turned into Holy Saturday. I just wanted to shut the tomb and have a good sob. I tell you all this, not so you'll worry about me. Promise, I'm okay. But because I think I'm not the only one right now. Lots of people I'm talking to these days find their emotions on a bit of a wild swing in the late days of this pandemic. And I think it's because we don't know what day it is. We're walking through our own Holy Week this 2021, and we don't know what day it is. Do you think it feels like Palm Sunday? where everything feels really good right now, but you know it's going to get worse before it gets better? Or are you on your knees in the Maundy Thursday garden at the end of your rope, just begging for God to make it stop? Maybe it's Holy Wednesday. Because tomorrow, at last in the UK, we're allowed to gather outdoors for a meal with up to five friends. (laughs) Maybe you find yourself struggling and hurting more than ever. Is it Good Friday in your world? Or are you locked in the tomb? Are you weeping outside of it? Or have signs of spring guided you to Easter so you can feel the resurrection hope springing out just a little bit already? What day is it anyway? If we just knew how this would end When it would end, it would be so much easier to just hold on. Now, I realize some of you may be a little uncomfortable by this comparison, thinking I'm making a comparison between our situation here in our comfy homes, many of us, to Jesus, not taking his sacrifice seriously enough. Stick with me. I'm getting there. Because I believe that this passion story of Jesus suffering and death and resurrection gives shape and hope and meaning to all of our days. First, because by this Holy Week story, we know that there is no day angry, wretched, suffering, cozy, joyous, transformative, bleak, exhausting, repetitive, or sin-ridden. There is no day where Jesus has not already been there before us. 
There is no day that Jesus' love will not go and no day God cannot reach to redeem. Second, because by this Holy Week story, we do know the ending. Not just for Jesus, but for us too. Jesus was willing to live and suffer and die among us to open the door to eternal life for us. God's story always moves towards Easter, towards new life and resurrection. We may not know what day it is today, where on the emotional roller coaster we are, but we know that the end of all our days will be with God. We are always moving one day closer to the resurrection. Third, Jesus' life and suffering and death, it didn't take place to help us hold on. God's plan was to help us let go. No matter what day it is, we can let go because we know we are held in the arms of God. No matter the twists and the turns, ascending to the heights, plummeting to the depths, God's got us. God's holding on. We are in the grip of love and grace and resurrection. And that's when I found my Hosanna. A Hosanna isn't a hallelujah. It's not a shout of praise or triumph. A Hosanna is a letting go, a release, a crying out. Lord, save us. Save us, Lord Jesus. What day is it? It is the Lord's day. And so we say, Hosanna in the highest. Save us, Lord. Blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. Amen. Oops. <laughs>
joyful sound, the Lord of men and angels rode on in lowest state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven and the King. Now is the time in our life together where we gather in our joys and our concerns and lift them up to God in prayer. Whatever day it is where you are, we invite your heart to join with ours as we pray for one another and for the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this journey through Lent, we are reminded that we need salvation that only you can give. We've slowed ourselves down to hear your voice. We confess the sins that make us feel far from you. And now, as we enter this Holy Week, it feels like the days are more overwhelming than ever. Yet we know that the light is coming. Journey with us through Good Friday and remind us of your love that gives us life. Remind us with each rising sun, that the light of Sunday morning is coming and our wilderness days will not last forever. Dear Lord, strengthen us in your grace and in the hope of your faithfulness this week. Fortify our roots in your goodness and give us your living water when we feel parched and hungry. Nourish our souls with the confidence of your presence and our hearts with the love of friends and family. Carry us through by showing us the delight in small moments of love shared over a tasty meal or a conversation. May our relationships and our love remind us that you are beside us, and that your self-giving love endures forever. As your presence is our companion this week, so we sit with all who need salvation today in body and soul. Teach us to bring your good news to the lost and hurting and hear our prayers on their behalf. We pray healing for the sick and comfort for the dying. We pray flourishing for all whose lives and finances are insecure and especially we pray warmth and nourishment for any currently homeless or hungry. We pray peace and joy for all who are suffering grief, anxiety, and depression. We pray that your justice will reign in cities and nations where people are caught in conflict and unjust rule. We give thanks for your divine work and for the ministry of your global church. And so it is, we boldly step into a holy week once again, even though we know that your betrayal is coming and that the cross looms ahead. But we do so because we have worshiped together, prayed together, and heard the scriptures together, knowing that you have been faithful, that you are with us now, and that you will be faithful even beyond our days. And we pray together with the words of Christ once more in the confidence of your faithful presence, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Once again, welcome to this moment of worship with the American International Church. We are continuing to pray with you and for you throughout the week. You can be in touch with one of us with your joys and concerns, anything to lift up, or email prayer at amchurch.co.uk. It is Holy Week, and that means that our offerings are beefing up per usual. You can find all the details in your weekly email, but a few things to know, including a live Zoom service on Monday, Thursday, this coming Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Join us for that. Details are in the email on Zoom links, et cetera. We will also be offering uh, video options for Friday, a video and podcast option to listen to the service on Sunday morning on Easter, to be able to take that into your home and out of your home, into your community, as we are still scattered in time, knowing that we can bring the joy and light and hope of Easter wherever we're at. All other activities and details are in your email, so please do see that, as well as opportunities to continue to serve and to give, because in this season we are reliant more than ever on your generosity and your giving. So as we go out in music today, may your hearts be moved to giving and to love this day. day it is for you, but I know that it is the Lord's day for all of us. It is one day closer to resurrection. And with that, we are invited to let go and know that we are held by God in the grip of love and grace and resurrection every day. From now until Easter, 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.